Welcome to the application video for Virtual Classroom 3, which covers managing performance. In this video, we will provide an overview of benchmarking, KPIs, and balanced scorecards. These areas are covered more comprehensively in Units 9 and 10 of the CSG. Analyzing performance is one of management accountants' key tasks, and there are a number of ways that performance can be assessed in an organization. There's a quote by management consultant Peter Drucker, what gets measured gets managed, which reminds us of the important role that performance measures play in motivating and managing performance. Now let's start with benchmarking. Per the CSG, a benchmark is a standard against which an aspect of a business is measured. The level at which this target or benchmark should be is not always clear at the outset. Hence, organizations undertake benchmarking exercises to identify best practice, processes, or matrix that they can work towards achieving. Here's another definition of benchmarking. Benchmarking is a measurement of the quality of an organization's policies, products, programs, strategies, etc., and their comparison with standard measurements or similar measurements of its peers. The objectives of benchmarking are one, to determine what and where improvements are called for, two, to analyze how other organizations achieve their high performance levels, and three, to use this information to improve performance. Note that it is important to begin with the end in mind. That is, we need to understand why we are benchmarking. This definition provides us with three reasons. This slide covers the benefits of benchmarking. The first one being that benchmarking helps to identify specific problem areas and eliminate guesswork. It also can be used to educate and train management and employees on the latest and best practices being used elsewhere. And benchmarking shows that performance targets which are, have been set are achievable since others, since others are already achieving them. Now let's look at the benchmarking process. The first step is, is to identify the products, services or processes to be benchmarked. The, the second step is to decide what we are going to benchmark against. This could be competitors or internal benchmarks. An alternative description for this step is identify and select potential benchmarks that could be used. The third step is to collect and analyze the data in order to identify areas that are, that are below best practice. Remember that it may often be difficult to gather relevant data. So the availability of relevant data will impact upon which benchmarks we can use. The fourth step is then to set the benchmark targets, followed by implementing changes to achieve these targets and following up to ensure that best practice has been achieved. In this module, we, be, we will be focusing on steps one to four and steps five and six won't be covered. So just to provide an example, let's say that we are a retailer of fresh fruit and vegetables and want to benchmark our sales specifically revenue per square meter of shop space per day. Then in step two, we identify three competitors against which we could possibly benchmark our sales per square meter per day against. In step three, we gather all the information available regarding their sales, store sizes, sales per square meter, etc. And let's assume their sales per square meter per day is between $90 and $125. Finally, in step four, we take a variety of factors such as our own strategic goals into consideration and set our benchmark target. This could be $120. Or alternatively, we could have decided to select a specific competitor to benchmark against. For more information on benchmarking, have a read through unit nine. Let's remind ourselves what a KPI is, key performance indicator. KPIs are used by organizations to track performance. Now, what makes a performance indicator key? To make a performance indicator key, they should be linked to critical success factors that are essential to achieving an organization's goals and objectives. A key performance indicator is specific to the organization and its circumstances. Be aware that a generic list of performance indicators might not provide a KPI that is specific and realistic for the organization under consideration. And each measure should clearly assess the achievement of a critical success factor. And one KPI that clearly links to that success factor should be sufficient. You can't have more than one measure of the same thing 
and all of them being key measures. I'd suggest you now pause this video and read the article by Bernard Ma, which is on page 10.6 of the CSG. In this article, which will take a couple of minutes to read, there's a great analogy which uses sailing a boat across the Atlantic to illustrate how a KPI should help us understand how we are performing in relation to strategic goals and objectives. So please read the article. Where do KPIs fit within performance management systems? This diagram from the CSG is of a typical performance management process. The first step is to develop some performance objectives. These would be based on the organization's overall strategy and the critical success factors that have already been identified. The next step is to set performance measures or KPIs. These enable us to measure whether or not we are meeting our objectives. The third step represented by the box at the bottom of the screen is to set performance targets that will help us ensure that we achieve our objectives. Once performance targets are set, we take action. This is when we implement initiatives and take action in order to achieve our targets. We now look at the box on the left. Whilst making things happen, we continuously evaluate performance to see how we are doing and consider updating or revising our performance objectives that we continue, then we continue with the cycle of setting new performance measures and targets and so on. The purpose of this slide really is to help us understand the big picture within which KPIs are used. They are covered by the box on the right. Now, I'll try and use an example to illustrate how this process works. Let's say that I love the adulation of the crowd and my overriding strategy as a person is to be a world famous athlete. And let's say that my key performance objective, which is the top box, is to win two gold medals at the next Olympics, the 100 meter sprint and the four by 100 meter sprint relay events. The performance measure or KPI I would use is the time it takes to run the 100 meters. And the bottom box there, which is my performance target, would be to say run 100 meters in nine seconds within one year. Now, I would hopefully make things happen by carrying out various initiatives within this year to achieve the nine second mark, for example, improving my diet, getting a good coach, spending some time exercising and so on. Then, based on the box on the left, I will evaluate my ongoing performance. And this, for me, would probably be a pretty humbling experience as it will enable me to see how far I am from achieving my targets. And it will then enable me to reevaluate my strategy and performance objectives, perhaps make them more realistic, and then create new performance measures or KPIs and, and set targets. And so the cycle goes on. So it's, it's a continuous process. Now, when developing performance objectives, performance measures or KPIs and, and the related targets, the SMART criteria provides useful guidelines. Let's work through what they are. Firstly, specific. This criteria confirms that the goal developed should be clearly defined and easily understood. Secondly, measurable. Measurability assesses whether the objective or goal is measurable, i.e. can a KPI used to measure whether the goal has been achieved? And is there data available for the measure or KPI that has been selected? In the exam, it's best not to create mechanisms, measurement mechanisms that would not obviously be in evidence. So for example, customer or staff surveys are not performed in every organization. And if the scenario doesn't mention that they take place, it would be better to develop a measure using mechanisms that are linked to the scenario. Let's move on. Action orientated. An objective and related KPI should inspire an action or behavior. It is important to consider whether it is an action that those measured by the KPI can actually undertake to influence the results. Care should also be taken to ensure that the behavior being driven aligns with expectations and with our overall objectives. Fourthly, realistic. The objective, KPI and related target being set should be achievable. So the target I set earlier of running 100 meters in nine seconds within one year would clearly not meet this aspect of the SMART criteria. Now, let's have a look at time bound. All objective goals are measured over a specified period of time using KPIs. So it is important for the time period to be clearly defined to allow for analysis of the results. A time period could be something like daily, weekly, monthly, or within one year. 
KPIs can be developed to measure any aspect of a business and its operations. Hence, it makes sense that organizations would use a mix of measures to provide a complete picture of performance. This diagram from Unit 10 of the CSG, it reflects various categories of KPIs, i.e. financial versus non-financial, KPIs that measure short-term performance versus those that measure long-term performance. Some measure operational results, while others focus more on strategic issues. And finally, some KPIs are lag indicators in that they inform us of historical events, while others are lead indicators that provide an indication of future events. As accountants, we are usually pretty comfortable with financial measures. However, all these other measures can be equally or even more appropriate. And explanations of these various categories of KPIs are, are in the CSG. Now, let's take a brief look at balanced scorecards. A balanced scorecard measures organizational performance across four perspectives of the organization's strategy. The financial perspective of the, of the balanced scorecard should include measures reflecting the short-term and long-term financial goals of the organization. Remember to look for the money in the measure. The customer perspective measures should reflect the organization's goals relating to customers and should measure if our customers are happy with us. The internal process perspective of the balanced scorecard contains measures relating to processes which are critical to the success of the organization. Here we're looking for aspects that are important to the customer or the efficiency of the organization. The learning and growth perspective of the balanced scorecard includes measures of input or resources required in order to deliver the strategy. These could be skilled employees, the right culture, effective information systems, and, and so on, so that an organization can deliver aspects of the business that are critical to its success. Now, each perspective of the balanced scorecard will incorporate the performance objectives, measures, targets, and initiatives that we spoke about earlier. There's also a cause and effect relationship between these perspectives that we need to be aware of. Starting with learning and growth, if we have the right inputs or resources, such as up-to-date technology, CRM software, the right skills, enough people, etc., this would mean that we would have the capacity or the adequate resources to run business processes in order to deliver the strategy. And if we have great internal processes to, for example, develop new products and services and then deliver them effectively and efficiently, we will create value for our customers, make them happy, and happy customers will translate into positive financial outcomes. For example, higher sales and profits. I hope you found this overview of benchmarking KPIs and balance scorecards useful. If you have any questions, then please post them in the discussion forum. Thank you.